Right, that was a fantastic song. Uh, yeah, I suppose I better give uh, Little Frank and his axe men from Demon Land or whatever. Are you ready yet, you lot out there? <laughs> Got to have my way now, baby. All I know is that it's good. You look like you're fun to me. I opened up my loving arms and watch out, cause here I come. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, right round, right round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, right round, right round. You know you do, you really do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please come and join me. Chris Seavey, a relatively unknown name nowadays within the British and international media. You may recognise his large paper mache head from the film Frank, starring Michael Fassbender and Dom Gleeson. The film used the character named Frank, who was derived from the 80s comedy character created by Seavey, known as Frank Sidebottom. Seavey was an aspiring musician during the mid 70s, playing his own brand of bizarre pop rock that he'd recorded himself onto cassette tapes. In 1971, he and his brother hitchhiked to London and staged a sitting at the Apple Records Company, demanding to see one of the Beatles in order to get their music heard on a wider stage. When they were asked to leave, they insisted on recording something, and were booked into the studio after playing a song to head of A&R Tony King. Once he had done so, he sent off the several demos he recorded to various labels who still rejected him. Later on that decade, CV formed the band The Freshies with a few other notable musicians like Martin Jackson and Billy Duffy. They received some attention, having received considerable airplay from Radio 1 and having a massive UK hit titled I'm In Love With The Girl on the Manchester Virgin Megasaur checkout desk. The biz, you get to meet all the top people. Trouble is, they never seem to be the soft people now. Then, in 1984, a character known as Frank Sidebottom first made his appearance on an entitled EP by Chris Seavey and the Freshies. The character, like I previously talked about, features an enormous paper mache head, sporting an old fashioned suit and was portrayed much like C.V. himself in the early days, as an aspiring pop star. Immediately after creating the character, C.V. would record an in-character cover, Material Boy, and sent it to several major labels with a note, I'm thinking of getting into showbiz, do you have any pamphlets? Hello, fantastic viewers, Frank Sidebottom here. Now, this week, well, in fact, this day, students are going to college. Some have been there for years, but some are brand new students, called freshers or something. Excuse me, madam. And so I have come down here today, just round the corner from my, well, it's not actually round the corner from my house, because I live in Timpley, but just up the road. Well, it's more than up the road. You have to get on a bus. I am here at Manchester University with all the fantastic students to tell you what it's like being a fantastic student. So come with me up the stairs of Studentville, which is better than milk and lemonade and all those things that they say on television, because that's what we're on. But let's find out what it takes to be a student. You're right, student. Yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, they're all right. Let's go and see what it's like inside Studentville. EMI were interested and offered him an interview. Chris appeared in character as Frank and was signed to their sub-label, Regal Zonophone. The label then released Frank Sidebottom's firm favourites in August of 1985. This was the character's third EP, having self-published two of his own previously. The EP reached 97 in the UK charts on the 31st of August 1985 before dropping out of the charts completely. 
Despite the lack of success CV had received from the release of the EP, his character Frank had received somewhat of a cult following, garnering crowds of over 500 in some parts of England where he would perform his own brand of stand-up comedy mixed with musical performances and sometimes even lectures. His brand of comedy was, if not very strange, always deemed family friendly by many and that led to his character receiving his own comic strip in the weekly children's comic Oink in 1986. And then by 1987, Frank had released his first album, a spoken word cassette called Fantastic Tales released through his own 1137 label. His first musical album though was entitled 5988 and that was released on vinyl by Intape a year later. The character would continue to garner small amounts of success here and there throughout the late 80s, having some regular appearances on television. The character's first ever stint on TV was with a children's TV show called TX. CV gave an in-character interview as Frank to promote his first professionally released EP with Xonophone. I'm afraid I think you have to go to the post office. And, oh, I've uh, got one. I'll get down there. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think you have to um, say something about your past. I don't think you, you're hiding anything that would prevent you. Oh, no, no. No, no, but I'm, are you accusing me of that? No, thing? certainly not. No. Oh, ah, we have a, we have yeah. a late visitor. A Frank, Hello. this is oh, Stanley. Oh, Thank you, sir. I wanted to read that. Could I say this? Your name, Frank Sidebody. Yeah. Frankly Sidebody, and you're sitting Sidebody Comfy Bowl on the settee. Yeah. yeah. Oh, deep joy. Uh, Following on from his first ever appearance on TV, CV seemingly became accustomed to the limelight. He then appeared on a series called Night Number 73, in which the character of Frank became a regular cast member for its final two series. CV would then be carried over to the show's short-lived spin-off 73, portraying Frank in two early episodes, then a character called Reg in the later half. Reg is actually one of the few examples of Chris playing a character on television not related to Frank Sidebottom. After the conclusion of 73, Frank became a regular cast member on the children's television show Motormouth before that was abruptly cancelled also. Not willing to give in, CV was then granted his own show, the show that while short lived, became an integral reason as to why the character is so well remembered for many. today because I'm trying to raise a bit of money with me bring them by Garden Fate Victoriana Open Day thingy. But to raise a bit of extra cash, I've got it sponsored by the fantastic railway station because I always use the train. So let's hear a message from our sponsors, Tipperley Station. Thinking of travelling... Frank Sidebottom's Fantastic Shed Show began in 1992 and was a show in which Chris Seavey, as Frank Sidebottom, would interview various guests in his garden shed. Guests included many British household names at the time, like Keith Chegwin and Jerry Anderson. However, after one season the show was cancelled, and aside from having a regular role in What's Up Doc, another UK comedy television series, Seavey's appearances lessened and lessened. 
CV eventually retired the character in the mid 90s and began working on various solo ventures. He enjoyed stop motion animation and became a regular crew member on Bob the Builder, a famous UK children's TV show in the mid 2000s. He also served as a writer on the fourth season of Pingu, another famous UK television show. After years of nothing, CV appeared as Frank in 2006 on a local television channel in Greater Manchester known as Channel M. Good morning, it's coming up to 10 to 9. All hell is breaking loose on the studio floor because Frank, Sybottom and friends are with us this morning for the weekend magical Timperley tour. Let's see what you could be in store for if you're going this Sunday. The magical Timperley tour. It's better than going to Las Vegas. His new show, Frank Sidebottom's proper telly show on black and white, featured celebrity guests and was not unlike his original Shed show from the early 90s. Following this stint, he once again bounced around the UK television circuit, appearing sporadically in some small roles on local TV channels, even appearing in an advert for EA Sports FIFA 2010 video game. Sadly, in May 2010, CV was diagnosed with cancer. He later died on the 21st of June 2010 at the age of 54, and he left a daughter, Asher, and two sons, Sterling and Harry. After it was reported that CV had died virtually penniless and was facing a pauper's funeral provided by state grants, a grassroots movement on various social networking websites raised £6,500 in a matter of hours. The appeal closed on Monday the 28th of June with a final balance of £21,631.55, and pence, all from 1,632 donators. And then on the 8th of July 2010, over 5,000 fans of CV and his character Frank Sidebottom gathered for a party at Castlefield Arena in Manchester to celebrate his life. In 2014, a film entitled Frank was released. It was written by John Ronson and Peter Strowan and was based on Ronson's experiences playing in CV's Oh Blimey Big Band. The film, as I said, stars Domhnall Gleeson and Michael Fassbender and is a story about a very niche rock band trying to pave their way into the mainstream. It's uh, highly entertaining and I do recommend giving it a watch. It will be one that I talk about in the future. Also in 2014, a feature length documentary about the life and art of Chris Seavey entitled Being Frank, The Chris Seavey Story was announced and was released in March 2019. The film documents CV's entire life, including his band The Freshies and his creation of the Frank Sidebottom character. It really is a fantastic piece of filmmaking and a great insight into who Chris CV really was. I think when it comes down to it, Chris CV is a prime example of being yourself no matter what the consequences and creating exactly what you want no matter how much it pleases people or how little it does. I think Chris CV created exactly what he wanted to make, how he wanted to make it, and didn't care about the success that it granted him in the future. When it comes to people like Chris CV, who has sort of been lost and forgotten in terms of media, uh, I think it's important to remember these people because uh, they're the ones that are keeping the form alive, and no matter what it is that they're doing, stand-up comedy, music, acting, I think it's always important to recognise those that create exactly the type of thing that they want to create regardless of what anyone else thinks. 